Okay, so here we're looking at trapeziums. Again, um, the plural, well, I think the plural is trapezia. And the formula for the area of a trapezium is half of your parallels added together. We call these A and B times by the height, so the bit that connects those parallels. So the first thing you've got to do on each question is identify your parallels. So I can see I've got a pair of parallels here, whereas on question four, my parallels actually are vertical. They're going upwards like that. So the first thing you want to do on each question is identify your parallel sides. Once you know your parallel sides, you just need to add them together. So that's this A plus B bit, half it, and then times it by the height. So that'll be the bit that's connecting them. So if here you'll be doing three plus six halved times by seven. And that's what you're going to do on each of these questions. Okay. Um, this bit here for question four, even though it's sideways, that 12 will be your height. Okay. If you turn your head sideways, then you can see these are our parallels. The bit connecting them, which we call the height, is that 12 bit there. Now, be careful on question five and six. These are harder because they've given us um, what we call kind of extraneous information, which is they've given us extra bits to try and trick us. Now, these four sides would be useful if I wanted to know the perimeter, because I could add the four sides up. But for the area, I don't need all of them. So it's really important that you identify your parallel sides. We do need them. And then we want the side, the height, so the side which connects those two parallels at a right angle. Now, you can see we've got this one here. This is not connecting those sides at a right angle, okay? We've got an obtuse angle here and an acute angle here. The height has to connect them at a right angle. So, check this one here. We've got a nice right angle there and a nice right angle there. So, this must be the height. Okay, so be really careful on this. You actually don't need this bit here at all unless you were to in the perimeter. So here's our parallels, A and B, and that's our height. So I'd like you to try and do the same when you're looking at this one. Identify your parallel um, when you're looking at the last one. Identify your parallel sides. Look for which bits aren't useful. What dimension that they've given us is forming a right angle to those two parallel sides. That's the height, that's the one you want. Cross out the other two, you don't need them. Okay, here is something a little bit new then. So these are kites, okay? So the definition of a kite is a quadrilateral, so a four-sided shape with one line of symmetry down the center. Okay, so you should be able to fold it down the middle and they'd fold perfectly on each other. So that's what a kite is. Um, now, a kite's actually really easy to work out because if I was to do 10 times seven, that would tell me the area of this badly drawn uh, rectangle here, okay? Now, this kite represents half of that rectangle, okay? Because we know a triangle is half of a rectangle and this little triangle here represents half of this top bit of the rectangle and this upside down triangle here represents half of the bottom bit of the rectangle. So the whole kite is half of this rectangle. So to work out a kite, all you need to do is your kind of base times height or your length times width and 
half that. Okay, so in this case, 10 times 7 halved. So that's what you're going to do for question. So you're going to do for question two as well. Question three, they're trying to trick you a little bit because they've not told you the total width across. They've only told you half of that width. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to double this width first of all, okay? Because we need to know the whole distance across the kite and they've only told us half of it. Okay, so it's gonna be not 0.3, but two lots of 0.3 to get all the way across. So double your 0.3, times it by the 0.8, and then we need to half it because it's half of that whole rectangle. Same in question four, they're just trying to confuse you a little bit. Um, we need this whole length, the whole length of the kite. So all you've got to do is add these two together, times that by the 11, and then half it. Um, they're trying to confuse you again here. We don't need this dimension or this dimension unless I was trying to work out the perimeter. For the area, all I need is the total length from the tip of the kite to the top of the kite. So it's this one here, this 14 that I want. And then the length from one side to the other. So you'll be doing your 14 times two and halving it. And actually these bits here, not useful to me at all, unless I was trying to work out the perimeter. Then question six, they've thrown in a really tricky one. So what we've got here is we've got a couple of different things going on actually, haven't we? Now these tags are important because what they do is they tell me that this length here is the same as this length here. And because they share this middle bit here, it means that these two triangles must be the same and these two triangles must be the same. So really what we've got is a very complicated looking two identical kites like that, okay? And the dimensions of the kite going downways is this 410, going downways. And the acrossways, well, it tells me halfway across the kite is 75. So all the way across must be another 75. So all the way across must be 150. So the dimensions of this kite here is 150 by 410, halved obviously. But then you've got another one over here with the exact same dimensions, 150 by 410, okay? So these are called arrowheads. They are, they're actually a type of kite because they share the same properties. They're symmetrical down the center here and the two top sides are the same length and the two bottom sides are the same length. But unlike a kite, which comes down like this usually, an arrowhead goes up into the top end of the kite. So uh, we can't use the same method to work out the area of it because obviously the area of an arrowhead is a lot smaller. So what we do is we treat this like, we imagine that this here is one big triangle that's had this bottom section cut out of it, okay? So you're just left with the top section, the arrowhead. So what we are going to do is we're going to work out the area of the big triangle and we're gonna take away the area of the small 
triangle. So what I mean by that is the big triangle is the big bit I've just gone around in red here. So our 26 by 16. You'd have to work out that triangle, write it down here. The small triangle is this little shaded bit that I've done, the chopped out bit. So that bit is 26 by 13. So you'd have to work out the area of this kind of bit we don't want. Put that there. Then you do the big triangle, take away that bit we don't want. And that leaves this kind of arrowhead sliver remaining. So that'll be your area. It's the same for this over here, but they've made it slightly harder. Um, but it's going to work in the same way. You've got your big triangle here, your 9 by 12 triangle. And we want to get rid of this little bit. So if the whole length there is 12 and this is 8, then this little bit must be 4. So you want to subtract off a 9 by 4 triangle.